Greetings, spider fans! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Well, it's finally happened. Recently, Sony have agreed to let Spider-Man go to the Marvel Cinematic Universe after 13 years and two incarnations. And, despite the events of the comic book One More Day, I'm looking forward to these movies as much as anyone. But today, I'd like to look back. Back to 2002, back to director Sam Raimi, and back to an objectiveless Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Released in 2002, Spider-Man tells the origin story of the original troubled teen superhero. A nerdy teenager receives incredible abilities after being bitten by a genetically enhanced spider, but now he must learn how to use them. And there's also the threat of the mysterious Green Goblin to contend with, whose true identity will shock you. So grab your web shooters and prepare to swing into action with your friendly neighbourhood, Spider-Man! Meet nerdy teenager Peter Parker and his friend Harry. They're on a field trip to a spider research lab. Fifteen genetically designed super spiders. There's fourteen. Eventually, Peter gets his chance. And a nasty bite. Though the effects next morning are quite beneficial. Well, if that's what their spider man does to a body, then maybe they could sell it to the military as a cut price super soldier serum. Anyone for a spider based Captain America? Harry's father, Norman, is a businessman. But business isn't going so great. We need to take the whole line back to formula. Bad enough, even, to risk testing his strength enhancement drug on himself. Back to formula. Maybe he'd have been better off with the spider serum. Or maybe he just forgot to carry the two. Who knows. Later, Peter realises more of his burgeoning powers. Which goes as awkwardly as you'd expect. <laughs> Although, I really should give him some slack. After all, he hasn't even got the costume yet. But less awkwardly than Peter's interactions with MJ. But before Peter's plan can be put into effect, Uncle Ben has some wise words. With great power comes great responsibility. And so the human spider steps into the ring with Bonesaw McGraw. Remember folks, the human spider is a fictional character. Don't try this at home. Pity he gets stiffed afterwards. Three grand for three minutes, and you pinned them in two. But the strands of Karma's web <laughs> are woven in the woof, as our hero soon discovers. <laughs> and yes, it is convenient that the robber tripped and wasn't pushed, but this movie is already violent enough. We don't need our hero pushing people out of windows. Still, at least he survived high school. And so, Spider-Man is born, and newspaper magnate J. Jonah Jameson is paying good money for pictures. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous! Even in the 21st century, newspaper magnates still control a surprising amount of popular opinion. Damn Murdoch. The plot really picks up when the Unity Festival is attacked. Spidey steps in to save the day, and make a good impression on MJ. We interrupt this tender, romantic moment to warn you against the evils of drinking before noon. <laughs> Somebody there?
the green goblin attacks the bugle. Leap. And offers a deal to our hero. Skipping the upside down kiss. Iconic as it is, it doesn't really drive the plot forward. The two meet again the next day, and our hero declines Gobbo's generous offer. Which makes Thanksgiving dinner slightly awkward, which leads to further turmoil for Peter as Aunt May is hospitalised. Those eyes! Those horrible yellow eyes! and for MJ as she is kidnapped by the Green Goblin. But our hero takes a third option. And the good people of New York take to their adopted protector. You mess with mine, you mess with New York! You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! But Gobbo's not finished yet. Lucky for Spidey then, that he sees through the Goblin's deception. Witness then a Goblin's ignoble consequence. Oh. Oh! Nasty! And so our movie ends at Norman Osborn's funeral. I swear on my father's grave, Spider Man will pay. So that was Spider Man. And despite the aforementioned comic book shenanigans involving deals with the devil and such like, I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This, then, is the movie that started it all. The all-action blockbuster that saw superheroes dominate the big screen. And it hasn't aged brilliantly, I'll admit. The dialogue can be hokey, the performances are a little stilted in places, and the CGI stands out like a sore thumb to 2015 and After Eyes. And yet, this is a good film. The pacing, which can be the Achilles heel of many a movie, gives us enough time to catch our breath without breaking our focus. And the romance of Peter and Mary Jane is actually believable. Kirsten Dunst making for a stunningly radiant redhead. And of our hero, Tobey Maguire's Parker is an every nerd par excellence. Sure, we make fun of his crying, but he shows genuine emotion in every scene. Compare and contrast then, the wild overacting of Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn, and the wild underacting of James Franco's Harry. None of which spoils this movie, and the action scenes are acrobatic and bone-crunching in equal measure. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. But with the right director, you'll get a spectacular Spider-Man movie. I'm Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, great entertainment, and the wind in your webs. Go get em, tigers! subscribers today. You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there.